In this video, we will demonstrate the standard operating procedure for the Chemistry Department's Advantage 200A Laser Raman Spectrometer, built by Delta Nu. It sits on the bench near the window in room 467 and is controlled by the software on the laptop computer on the same bench. After booting up the computer, launch the operating software by double-clicking on the yellow, black, and green Delta Nu icon located on the computer desktop. Maximize the window for the application by clicking on the square icon in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Turn on the spectrometer with the power switch located in the upper corner on the back side of the black box. Wait a couple of minutes to allow the system to warm up. When the system is ready, the blue LED on the front of the black box should be illuminated continuously, that is, not flashing. We will use glass sample tubes that are about two inches long and a quarter of an inch in diameter. These small tubes fit in the small opening on the front end of the spectrometer between the box and the shiny round knob. Either solid or liquid samples can be examined using this type of sample tube. When you have only a small amount of sample to work with, you can put your sample in a melting point tube. Ask about using the adapter if you wish to work with a smaller sample size. Obtaining a good spectrum often requires adjustment of the position of the sample with respect to the laser beam. Record preliminary spectra by clicking on a button labeled Continuous. You can optimize the peak size by rotating the round knob on the front of the black box. That will move the sample toward or away from the front of the spectrometer. By moving the position of the sample, you can optimize the signal. Frequently, background fluorescence produces a large signal that can swamp out the weak Raman signal. We can subtract out this background automatically by choosing Baseline from the menu along the top of the screen. You should see the status box change from Off to On for the Baseline below the spectrum. Press Acquire to collect a new spectrum. The baseline correction should flatten out the background. To get the best precision for assigning peaks, choose High under the Resolution menu bar at the top of the screen. The instrument gives us several spectral ranges to choose from. Let's open the window to the widest range, 200 to 3400 reciprocal centimeters. Now when we scan, we'll pick up features that were outside the window before. This will allow us to see the CH stretch at 3000 wave numbers now. Since Raman scattering can be a weak signal, noise may be a problem. There are two ways to improve our signal to noise ratio. The first approach is to average several spectra. You can do this by selecting the term average from the acquisition menu at the top left hand side of the screen. A box will open to allow you to type in the value for the number of scans you wish to average. This approach takes longer for the computer to process the data. However, it avoids a problem associated with long integration times. Long integration times lead to detector saturating, that is, reaching a maximum allowed count, and possible compression of peaks. The alternative approach is to increase the integration time using the little box at the left-hand side of the screen. As the integration time increases, the detector spends more time collecting light. The signal-to-noise ratio improves in proportion to the square root of the integration time. So if you want to improve the signal-to-noise ratio by a factor of two, you have to collect data for four times as long. When you have a spectrum you wish to keep, click the word Save along the top of the screen. If you want to work up the data with Igor Pro, choose the ASCII 2 format. Otherwise, choose the SPC file format. Then click the Save button on the spectrum. This action should open the directory for your files. Open the folder for your class or your research group and type the file name in the appropriate box at the bottom and click Save. Save your files in your own folder inside the class folder or group folder. 
You can open an old file and view it or manipulate it in several ways using the Galactic Data Viewer. You can find its icon on the desktop. It is labeled Shortcut to SPC View. You can read the XY coordinates anywhere that you position the cursor on the spectrum. For quantitative work, you should read the peak intensity with respect to its baseline. That is, you should record the peak height above the baseline. Place the cursor on the top of the peak to read the absolute peak height. Imagine drawing a straight line from a point just left of the peak to a point on the baseline just to the right of the same peak. The signal that we want is the height of the peak from this baseline. We need to subtract out the value for the baseline directly below the peak. If the peak is directly above the center of this baseline, then we can take an average between the value at the point on the right and the baseline on the left. We subtract the average value between these two yellow arrows from the total peak intensity. When your spectrum is open in the Galactic Viewer, you can save it to a clipboard and paste the spectrum into a file that Microsoft Word can open. Open the WordPad program. You can treat this as a Microsoft Word file. Paste the spectrum into the page in WordPad. You can open this folder and splice the spectra into your report or print them out for your notebook. Please note that you will not be able to read precisely the peak positions nor intensities while in this format. At the end of your work, remove any samples from the instrument, clean up around the bench, turn off the power to the instrument, and sign your name in the logbook.